Hello friends, welcome to Channel Raza Blade. I'm your friendly neighborhood Raza. If you enjoy or are interested in nail stamping, nail art, new products, reviews, tutorials, and hopefully a lot of inspiration, that's what you'll find on my channel. So welcome. If you enjoy this video, the best way to show it is to like it. Uh, that's the thumbs up and uh, comment below about your favorite nail art. All your comments help me out with uh, the algorithm of the YouTubes. Um, it also helps me a heap if you subscribe, and of course I'd also love you to join us anyway. Make sure you sign up for all my notifications to get uh, little note notes from uh, YouTube about my new videos. So uh, today we're going to dive right in to the monthly subscription box. Uh, this one is from Butometry. It's the My Mini box. This guy, I just did an unboxing video a bit ago. You'll find that on my channel. I'll link it below so you don't have to search around for it if you want to see the unboxing. But this is the August box. The theme, Pirates, because uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day is coming up on September 19th. And I also promised to give you a bit of a tutorial to show you how I got this parchment paper look for my... Um, for my manicure that you are looking at now on my left hand. I have a couple of other manicures. I never give you just one thing to look at. I like to give you a lot of ideas and I'll walk you through what I did and how I made it. And of course, any more questions or clarification, just ask below. Um, my whole thing is to help you. So I hope it, I hope this all does help. So um, we have three plates that were in this box. Uh, very, very good, exciting when there are three plates in the box. This is Moyu London's Atlantis collection. This is a layering plate, if you see. Um, and uh, I will go through that a bit, or maybe not. Um, this one's a fairly easy, uh, straightforward layering plate. But I will show you some things that I did with those layerings. Uh, the other Moyu London plate in this one was Tropical Collection number 28. And these are for shorter nails. Oh, you can get the subscription box for shorter nails or for longer nails. You do have both options. Um, and of course, links below for any subscription or products. So I used this and this stamp and an interesting color palette that I was after for this Manny here. These are really short oval nails, but I wanted to kind of play around and this gave me a good opportunity to do it. So I hope you like that one. Um, the other one that I have is from the layering plate. I don't remember what I called this one, but before I forget, I'm going to tell you I used two more supplemental plates. These plates are all available on butometry.com that I'm showing you. This clear jelly stamper plate uh, was a collab with Up a Daisy Nails, and this one's called CJS LC15. And we have a lot more options. I like to use uh, plates like this in conjunction with one another. So I've had some, uh, you know, look at all the creative potential that you're looking at here as far as Pirates goes. And of course, you can use them in non-traditional ways. I think I did that. Maybe I didn't, but we'll see. Um, all right. One thing that's awesome about Clear Jelly Stamper is they now have these little guides that kind of show you what the images are supposed to look like when they're together and all the layers have been uh, have been applied. All right. The last one that I added in here is this candy skull plate. It is really cool and it's R014, I believe. But if you look, this image here on my thumb is from that plate. And the map lines and the arg, that's from the plate that was in the box, of course. But I really enjoyed this. I love the candy skull plates. They are, once again, on butometry.com. And, uh, I, yeah, I love this one. So let me put it aside, though, so I don't have to really be distracted by it anymore. So manicures. I did a little bit of my punny naming things this time. Um, this, no, well, not for this, though. This pond mani which is essentially one made with like between layers of sheer polish. First I did a gradient. So we've got the darker teal there, the lighter blue green there. And then I supported it with, of course I got rid of that polish because it was in my way. Anyway, I supported it with like a sheer jelly kind of aqua with sparkle in it. 
and we've got one of the glass green glass bottles from the uh, stamping plate we've got some of the layering objects from the other stamping plate and then I stuck a treasure box down right by this coral and then we've got some algae or whatever the heck that is planted at the bottom of the sea um, and I really do enjoy this one um, I will have these on my Instagram uh, with like the individual shots of the manis like this um, and I think I've told you about as much as I mean this one's not very complicated it was from the tropical collection of 28 so I just layered these leaves here's some maybe monstera leaves and then I put in the yellow and the teal this color uh, is Electro Candy Pop from um, Hit the Bottle. I hope that that becomes a permanent item someday. I don't know if it can, but it is one of my favorite stamping polishes from her. All right, so there is my plate. Uh, sorry, there there is that manicure. Um, and then my, let's get on to my, um, I guess, star mani, right? So I did a parchment base, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. And then I had some text, chivalry timbers. I like, uh, we've got the compass rose and then some map lines, um, an island, a shark, and the treasure with the red X. So, and then I added that arg there. <laughs> anyway, um, I just, I really like this one. It makes me happy. And I think I'll be wearing it on Talk Like a Pirate Day. This is one of the reasons I love press-ons. Because I soak them off in warm, soapy water. And then I can wear them again. And that's the best way, in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, nail art swatches. What do we have here? This guy, I have been calling him Yard Sale. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm sorry. So that's a gold background. And then we have some of these yar words kind of pasted back there. And then we have a ghost pirate. It reminds me of the very first Pirate of the Caribbean movie with them just marching skulls out of the sea. Really, really cool effect in that movie. So that one is my yard sale. <laughs> I didn't name the, well, I called it Goodnight Moon. So I guess that itself is a reference. Oh my goodness, it does not want to come up. Okay. Usually I just bring it closer, the whole thing closer, but I wanted to kind of show you things. So this is technically an island, right? But I, it looked like a cloud to me. So um, I took that off the clear jelly stamper stamping plate and I put it with the moon. And I love the moon with the beard and the hook nose and it's just really cool. So I like that one. Um, that one's good night moon. And then we've got don't be jelly fish. And this is that uh, China Glaze Dip and Dots polish. And then I put a coat of sheer white, which I built in a little, do I have any of my little things handy so that I can show you what I do? Maybe I don't. Let me try once. Okay, this isn't it at all. This is one of the things that I, that I mix big paint in, but I also use two liter soda lids and that really helps me. Anyway, so sheer white over that, and then I used a color, color alike is the stamping brand of this particular purple for the jellyfish. I really like this one. It's one of my favorites. And then this one was pretty flippin' easy. I took a clear um, swatch, and then I did this stamp twice, one in that lighter green, one in that deeper green, like a Kelly green, and I really love this look. I like negative space looks all the time anyway, but I mean, not all the time. You know what I mean, whatever. And then this guy is called Ship Out of Luck. And then th this is the sunk ship, the shipwreck um, image from Where'd It Go? Where'd It Go? Oh, here it is. There you go from right there. And then I put the narwhal down there because I didn't want so much space just being blue because there's no real texture that I added to it for the ripples or anything. So I just wanted to put something there to um, make that space more significant. 
And finally, this one is my favorite. We all know it's coming up to Halloween. And here's my ghost ship. I did a spooky green sky with that um, kind of fairy light or ghost light aspect. I did a neon uh, yellow green in the wave that is on the plate that comes with the box number CJS150 once more. And then I stamped this in black and then I colored in all of the sails that really bright neon kind of a green. So, and then this was done, the texture was done with some stamping with a few different colors. And I really, and not stamping, sponging is what I meant. I really enjoy this one. Tell me what you think. Um, it did take a little bit of effort, but I used some visual uh, inspiration, which I'm about to show you, of course. One thing that I got left, that I left out of the box, and I don't know how it got left out of my unboxing. Um, I think I was maybe afraid to break it during the unboxing, so I set it aside. But this bag is so cool, and it can help give you kind of a visual inspiration for those parchment nails see my parchment is lighter than that but you can go with the deeper parchment think about like tea staining colors that you'll mix together in the smush marble melt uh, method that i'm about to tell you about so i'm going to move all of this over so that i can start playing with my things i was going to tell you about a bunch of different pirate ships but that didn't work out uh, but while I set up my space, I am going to tell you a few little fun facts. I call it a treasure trove of trivia. Yes, I, yes, see what I did there. I'm, I'm not finishing ever with the puns today. <laughs> All right, so Captain William Kidd um, is essentially responsible uh, for the myth of the buried pirate treasure. He was known to have made some serious... Um, scores out on the high seas. Uh, some when he was a privateer, which is like a legal pirate. Uh, when some, you know, when a country's at war with other people, the country will say, "Hey, I'm going to send you a little le a letter of mark, and we're going to go ahead and have you work for us and steal everything that the other country wants to import and export." Anyway, he had a bunch of money. He had a bunch of gold and. Nobody could find it when he was arrested for piracy and faced the noose. Um, you know, his treasure was never recovered, and this is the first appearance of the idea of hidden or buried pirate treasure. What I'm doing right now is I'm taking all these colors out of my baggie. I saved them for you so I could show you what I'm up to. I don't use new stamping. I don't, know, I don't use new stampers for this method because it can be a little bit messy. So I'm going to lint roller this because it looks like there's a bit of paint still on there. There we go. So I, I always use at least two stampers because the smush effect, you need at least two stampers. Okay. Um, what other thing am I going to tell you while I work? Um, oh, yeah, I did have a note about this. So... Although we've got no verifiable pirate treasures that have been found to this day, we do have undersea wrecked ships that uh, various discoverers have plundered. And there's been some immense amounts of um, gold and treasure found under the sea in wrecked ships. So let me start going with this. Um, but if you want details, I mean, it's all on online. Another really fun thing about William Kidd, Captain William Kidd, is that um, Billy the Kid, who was a famous American outlaw, Billy, short for William, and Billy the Kid's real name was Henry McCarty. I'm just kind of dabbing various little bits of paint in proportions that I want it. I'm trying to show it to you. Here's a little bit of Mother of Pearl, just to give it a little bit of texture. Um... So, Henry McCarty was Billy the Kid's name, so maybe he thought of himself as a land pirate because uh, he was a thief, and, um, and he might have, I don't know, there's no way to verify it, but he might have uh, given himself that nickname, uh, in, in, inspired by Captain William Kidd. Uh, the first time they hung William Kidd, I don't remember exactly what happened, but it didn't work. And so there were some people who were of the opinion that they should have let him go. 
there's a bit of bad luck there with you if you have to hang somebody twice. Anyway, so I'm not talking about tall ships this time, although I do love to talk about tall ships. Um, we've got a three-masted ship, I think, is the ghost ship. So it could be a schooner, it could be a brig, or brigantine, that's short for. So you'll notice I do have a coat down on these. That's just so that no white or oyster color that I don't want shines through. And I'm just going to keep pressing it down. Once you get a certain amount of, um, what's the word? Once you get a certain amount of coverage, you kind of look at it and see if you like it or not. This one doesn't look so terribly much like a parchment yet. And top coat will help that. There you go. Much better. All right. So I'm going to do another one. And then I'm going to show you how to kind of touch them up if you don't like exactly what you've done. You'll notice I've spilled this entire stamper in acetone. Well, I guess it actually happened where the acetone is what's spilled, of course. So it doesn't look very fancy now, but I promise we're going to see an improvement here. So I, I keep these little bits um, on the stampers until I'm done with the top coat and any issues that I might have. So I'm going to grab a top coat. Let's see and see how these come out. I am going to tell you a, a cheat if you mess it up, like the first ones I made, the ones I'm wearing, I actually did too many dark blotches in there and it was really leaning dark. I was not a fan. So I'll show you what I did to fix it. All right, next one. So, but if you want to hear a story about real treasure, there's a story, it's an American story called The Treasure of Forest Fen. He was a wealthy art collector and dealer and writer, and he was diagnosed with terminal cancer at a certain age. Uh, now, long ago, I think he was like 50, and he, he very old, or now. I don't, I don't actually remember if he has passed since, but uh, he thought he was going to go out pretty soon, so he took $2 million worth of gold coins and artifacts buried them, and then wrote a poem that was full of clues. And believe it or not, just a couple years ago, the treasure of Forest Fen was found. The finder doesn't really want to make it very, make himself very uh, public. He's trying to stay as anonymous as possible because during the treasure hunt, there were multiple attacks on Forest Fen's house by people who were trying to get to the treasure. So let's see if we like these. I do. I do like these. So this is the sort of thing that I would do for um, this kind of look for a map or, I mean, medieval manuscript, this is a really versatile kind of a look. Um, what I did when I screwed it up and put too much dark stuff in is I took this sheer polish, Sinful Colors Quick Bliss, it is called Candy Coated Mint. I took this sheer ivory polish or candlelight, whatever you want to call it, and I put one coat over my parchment and it lightened it up a treat. And now I love this one. It's my favorite one I've done in a very long time. So uh, if you want a soundtrack for these maritime manis that you might make in a week or so, I have some recommendations. Ail Storm is really good. Stan Rogers is amazing. He's one of my favorite of all time. Definitely listen to Barrett's Privateers. It's about joining a pirate crew or privateers that's the legal version and then great big c one of my favorite bands especially they have a whole song on captain kid who i just mentioned to you so um ill storm and then from pirates of the caribbean there's actually a uh, a song hoist the colors that uh, melinda i think her name is and lauren paley they do like a quartet very very beautiful once you are all done with all of your little smushing then you can clean off your stamper you can use you know if you're looking at your parchment nails and you don't quite like it you can always do another little smush and just uh, apply little bits and pieces wherever you think it needs work okay um if you 
tell me if you like this one if you enjoyed this box thank you for joining me um did you like the nail art what's your favorite piece of nail art is it this one is it a different one um please give me a thumbs up uh also subscribe and please comment and let me know what you like best or of course maybe what you want in the next tutorial etc etc um i'm working on a bunch of stuff halloween's coming up i have a collection from adored colors that video come out today or tomorrow it is very exciting um and i still have some halloween stuff in my back pocket but uh please um give me a give me a shout if you have anything that you you know need to know i'm always available so uh, uh i guess it's time to go so bye i hope i see you sooner than later gotcha bye bye